Good afternoon. Even the best of us get cold feet. We start to wonder, is God really here? Will God guide me? Will he take care of me? This happens to us even when evidence of God's presence is right in front of us. Now, if this happens to you, don't beat yourself up. Don't get discouraged. But at the same time, pay attention because God is already at work all around you. We find a perfect example of this in the life of Moses, one of the greatest heroes of the faith in the Bible. Remember, Moses had encountered God at the burning bush. Moses called plagues down on Egypt. Moses is the one who parted the Red Sea. He led an entire nation to live in a barren wilderness and provided them with food and water. And he was able to do all of this because God is what was at work in him and through him and all around him. Moses went to the top of the holy mountain, Sinai, to speak directly with God. And there he received the Ten Commandments and the rest of the law. So you would think this is a man who would have every confidence in God's ability. He's someone who would know without a doubt that God could lead him through any challenge. You'd think that, right? But no. Moses was just as human. Moses was just as prone to doubt and anxiety as the rest of us. In Numbers chapter 10, the Lord told Moses that it was time for the Israelite nation to leave Mount Sinai. They had been camping out at the base of the mountain for about two years. And God explained to Moses exactly how he should organize the movement of this entire nation, this thousands of people. So what does Moses do? Moses goes to his father-in-law and begs his father-in-law to go with them, to lead them. Now, Moses' father-in-law knew the desert they were living in very well. He had lived there his entire life. So he would be an excellent guide for where to go, where they could find shelter and water and whatever else it would take for them to survive in this desert. So Moses goes up to his father-in-law and says, please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. Now, on the one hand, as I said, this makes perfect sense. If you're responsible for leading a huge group of people through a barren wilderness, it's wise to have someone who knows the land well. Someone too, as Moses said, to be our eyes. Help us avoid the dangers. Help us find good places to camp, like places that have water. But Moses' father-in-law refused. He said, no, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. See, there's one very important detail we need to keep in mind in this. Moses did not need his father-in-law to guide him and the rest of the nation because he had the Lord's presence. Moses had a literal, visible, right in front of your face kind of presence and guidance from the Lord that the rest of us could only dream of having. For you see, the cloud of the Lord's presence of his glory covered the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a sort of portable temple that was right in the middle of the camp. And this cloud of the Lord's presence looked like a cloud by day, but by night it looked like fire. And we read about it in the chapter immediately before this passage that I just read. And by the way, we also find a similar description in Exodus chapter 40. In Numbers chapter 9 we read, Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as this cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they stayed in camp. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. Now, with this in mind, Moses' desire for his father-in-law to guide him takes on a whole new flavor. 
Moses already had the presence of the Lord there to lead him, to tell him when to stay, when to go, and where to go. He had no need for a human guide because God was showing him the way so clearly. So what was wrong with Moses? Did he forget about God leading him by this cloud? Did he ignore it? Did he notice it? Or did he maybe not trust it? Now, before you judge Moses too hard, too harshly, take a long, hard look at yourself and ask yourself, am I any better than Moses? Maybe you don't have a pillar of cloud and fire to guide you, but the Lord is still with you. The Lord is still guiding you. And there are plenty of other resources available to you. You might not have a cloud of fire to look at, but you have the Bible. You have the Holy Spirit at work within you. You have a God who wants to come to you in prayer, not only to hear what you have to tell him, but for you to listen for where he guides you. You have fellow believers in the church to consult with. Now, these may not seem to be as clear-cut as what Moses had, but they are just as real and just as valuable. And I am convinced that if you open yourself up and ask God, show me, lead me, guide me, I know that he will. So, are you accepting the guidance and presence that the Lord provides? Or are you going to be like Moses, asking his father-in-law to be his guide? Do you want to settle for second best? Or do you want the challenge of following where God leads? Would you pray with me, please? Holy God, we are grateful for this example of Moses to remind us that even at our weakest times, even at our times when we are most discouraged, we see that we're not alone, that even the best of your followers can be just like us. But help us also, Lord, to recognize the ways in which you are guiding and leading us today. Maybe not with a cloud of fire, but by your Spirit at work in us and all around us. Show us your way, Lord, so that we can follow as you lead. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.